outside. I was a supervisor there for a while. And I knew Mark, and he used to ride a lot when he was working. But he did hustle. We never know he had a back problem. And he was always in the spirits. And he knew when Mark was missing, he knew where to find him. Yeah, I'll have his cigarettes. Yeah, I'll have his cigarette and drink your coffee. And that's where we find him. So we go out to NYU and do it. But he always pushed that mail out, and he never hesitated. He never gave me any lip. He was always a team player. You know, no matter what anybody said, that guy was right there pushing the mail every single day. Nobody had a bad word to say about him. He was a good guy. You know, and sharing the stories with, the, with his family. You know, you, you get to learn a lot more about sharing stories with the people that you live with. You learn a lot more about the guy and how much this guy put value to everybody and how much he shared with everybody. And I'm sure he truly missed by everybody. And it's a hard person to replace. Mm. And he served his country in the Navy, besides going on to the Postal Service. Mm. And that's something that just you can't bring it up to. Mm -hmm. You know, you can say anything you want about it. This guy was a truly good guy. Mm. And nobody has a bad word to say. I never heard anybody talk about him. Uh, and I know he suffered with his demons over the years. The supervisor, we hear a lot. You know that he was back and forth and now the rehab and stuff like that. But he pressed on. And you have to have a lot of respect for somebody like that. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that time with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Thank you, Bob. Hi, I'm Sharon. I work with Mark at the post office for uh, just the past 13 years. Wow. And um, he was a really, really hard worker. Mm -hmm. He worked hard. Uh, he pushed, he pushed. And I know that two days uh, that he took off to uh, a move. Um, we had mail that we had to get out. It was two days that mail didn't get out. You know? mm -hmm. And he pushed, he pushed, he would yell, I want Sharon, I need the mail from my for, for, uh, California, I need the mail right now. And, and I had to go get it and I bring it to him. And uh, he would always, at the, when we finished getting everything done, he said, Sharon, you did a real good job. Or, you know, he would talk. And I worked with him also at Express, and he would come and he would help me every day. And um, he would give me, he would tell me the word of the day that he would tell, talk to you guys. <laughs> so sharing the word of the day, or then, you know, we would uh, start talking and he would start talking really serious and then he ended up with a joke. And was, it's okay, Mark. But um, I would truly miss him because he was a great guy. Um, like you said, he would help anybody. And um, I would miss him. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you guys, uh, you know, life is short. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, those you love, you tell them you love them. Mm -hmm. Because you never know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm the leasing agent of uh, where he recently moved to. <laughs> yes, that is me. Um, so I met Mark mm -hmm. maybe about a week and a half before he actually moved in. So just the beginning of October. Um, our office doesn't open till 10, but he always show up at like 9.30 every day, <laughs> even after I told him to open till 10. Um, so the day that I met him, he had other leasing agents working there, but I don't know what it was. Like I opened the door at 9.30, which is not close to me because I could have gotten in trouble. And I just had a conversation with him, kind of just trying to figure out, you know, what was going on. If he needed help with something, um, told me he was looking for an apartment. So as soon as the doors opened at 10, I brought him in. We went over some stuff. He was like, no, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm lease here, but I'm gonna do the application at home. So a couple of days later, he came back and he had one of his friends um, trying to do the application online. It wasn't working. So I was like, just tell him to stop, we'll do it here. <laughs> so we put out the application. Uh, came back, he's perfectly fine. We, uh, I called him, let him know, hey, you know, I'm gonna email you over this paper. It's gonna take him a bunch of cost for you to move in. I've never seen anybody move in with easily, like his price was super low. My boss was like, are you sure he's paying the right amount? I'm like, yeah, that's a nice credit. That's what happened. <laughs> um, but I, with Mark, I did a lot of things that I, I didn't normally do on this, but I've been in my field for about two and a half years now. And um, I've kind of learned that Mondays are my busy day, but not only did I, you know, step out of my allowed box and I always will talk to him before our doors open. Um, I scheduled his move in on Mondays, which is bad because we always have somebody coming in on Monday with a bunch of problems. <laughs> um, but since it was Monday and we were running a little bit behind, we had, we had a, a long time to sit and talk. 
Uh, and we talked about my kids. I have two kids. My, there are pictures on my desk. So we talked about them, and I'll never forget. I've, I've had people tell me, like, you don't look like you have two kids. The first question Mark asked me was, where'd you get them from? But it was just that, that, that hour and a half that we were still getting his unit ready. Um, it was a lot of him just trying to get to know me as a person. Um, mm. I pride myself on building reports with people because I've learned in my field that that's the best way to succeed. Um, but the rapport that I built with him hmm. made me so comfortable to where I, I started paying attention to more detail with certain things. Um, we went and did his walkthrough the day of his move in. Hmm. His AC was exactly weird. I was like, I'm gonna get them to come in here and check that just to be sure. So I got my guys in there to do that. And I came in a couple days later, I was like, I can't get my remote to work. I was like, I forgot to program it. It's not gonna work, but I'll fix it. <laughs> so I got that situated for him. Um, I wasn't, uh, the day that Todd, his older brother, came in, um, I was actually on lunch, and I see Miss Paulette in the back, and I see Todd walk through, and I'm like, why does he look so familiar? So, while they're back there, you know, I asked my, my co-worker, I'm like, hey, why are they here? And I'm like, you know, one of our residents has been doing too good, I'm like, that guy looks really familiar. I don't know why, but he looks so familiar to me. So later on that day, I went and I asked my, my immediate boss, our sister puppy manager, I'm like, okay, what resident is sick? What's going on? And she's like, I'm not telling you nothing. I'm like, no. I'm like, what is, what's wrong? She's like, well, you're going to cry, and I don't need to cry. <laughs> so um, she said, your moving isn't doing too good. Okay, you got to elaborate on what you're moving. She's like, 1427. I'm like, Mark. She's like, yeah. She's like, you know, can't go into too much detail, but he got in a car accident and it's not looking too good. Um, I'm a very emotional person. So, of course, I started crying. And my head boss walks in. He's like, what, what, are you okay? What's going on? I'm like, I, I don't deal well with stuff like this. So, um, I want to say maybe a day or two later, I, I met Todd and Mr. Wren. Um, they were outside the door before I was our student and I walked out there because I see Todd's face and I went and had a conversation with them and I sympathized because, you know, I was in this position a couple of years ago my mom passed and she was on life support for a little while. Um, but as I was telling you to earlier, I never dealt with that and I had no choice but to deal with it now. Um, you ever look into one's eyes and you see pain, but you see strength at the same time? That's what I see in their faces. And I was like, I've been there. I, I know that pain. And I know that you're trying to be strong, but at the, like you're just like, I don't, I don't know what to fix. I don't know how to fix this. Um, so I asked how did they could keep in contact with me just so that I could know what was going on. I was pulling for him. I was praying. My daughter was praying. I have a six-year-old mm -hmm. who has the most faith I've ever seen in a six-year-old. Mm. Um, so we were praying and I got to meet Miss Collette, uh, I believe the day after or two days after I met Todd. And I asked him to do the same thing, like keep me in contact. I wanna know what's going on, you know, I, I need him to pull through with this. Um, and she was like, well, you know what, it's, it's fine. Like, you know, I appreciate that. So I tried to uh, intrude without really intruding. <laughs> I would text and say, hey, you guys, just checking up on you. With what's going on, but it's okay. Miss Collette sent me a text message that let me know something was wrong, but I was like, I don't really know, so I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna take what she's saying at face value. <laughs> um, and then today she she had, she had called me, and I was on the phone with, uh, I believe I was on the phone with my daughter's doctor, and um, she asked if she could come meet. And as soon as she said it, I was like, I already know. Mm -hmm. So I asked her to come to uh, the apartment that I live at. And we were sitting in the office, and she told me, and I was like just stuck standing there. I have my one-year-old son in my lap, and my six-year-old is moving around, and I'm like just stuck in. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to fix this. Um, that's how I do with stuff. I fix stuff. I, I plan stuff. I do something, and it was just like, how do you fix it? Um, I didn't know about his his battle until today. Um, 
throughout the process of talking, he never asked, like he never made it about him. He wanted to know about me, about you know why I moved from California, about how my kids were doing, you know, about he kept reminding me how strong I was. It's something I remember. Mm. Uh, but he taught me something even after, you know, I found out what was going on with him. Um, he taught me that sometimes it's okay to ask for help and sometimes what you think is right for you isn't right for you. Mm. Um, he made me realize that where I'm working at right now isn't a fit for me. And that's a testament to who he is because even after him not physically being here, he still has made me realize that I have a lot of potential to be something more than what I am. Mm. Um, he's also made me realize that crying doesn't make you weak. That's something that, you know, I've, I've, I've fought with for a long time. Um, I'm really proud to have known him. I wish that, you know, my kids would have met him like we planned on doing. <laughs> I tell them I'm going to my kids until I was sleeping, you know. Um, he talks about the post office all the time. I know he worked crazy hours. <laughs> I know he worked a lot of hours. He, he used to tell me that he would come in a little bit early to try and, he, and get his mind working how he wanted it to work. So I know he was definitely dedicated to what he did. Um, but I do feel very blessed to have met someone that had that much of an impact because I haven't had that. I haven't had that impact since my mom left. So that was definitely a blessing. Mm -hmm. And then to me, Ms. Hallett, Ms. Duran, and Todd, and that support system that he had was definitely there. Uh, mm -hmm. As much as he spoke about the post office, I know that support system was there as well. Um, but I just want to say I'm, I feel very blessed to have known someone that had so much drive and so much passion, not only for himself but for other people, mm -hmm. and who seen good in other people and wanted other people to be better. Yeah. He used to tell me I can run my property. I'm like, I'm not running this property. This is, yep, nope, can't do this. <laughs> but it's like, don't underestimate yourself. Yeah. You're stronger than you think. Yes. We'll see you one day. And now I know that I am, and I just want to thank you guys for including me in this. Um, and I can't even look back there, guys. I'm so scared. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you to Mark for showing me how strong I am and letting me know that it's okay to be me and it's okay to be different mm -hmm. because that's what it was. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of him for beating what he beat. You know what I mean? Even though, even if, if, if he took a step back, it's okay. He still took a step forward, mm -hmm. and he still fought for as long as he did. So I'm very proud of that. Um, Oh, yeah, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cry again. So I'm going to walk away. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Sierra.